Hi, everybody. Uh, I want for you to use this Wednesday time to work a little bit on your research and adding to your slideshow. So I had a few different things that I wanted to teach you how to do and talk to you about. And they mostly involve me sharing my screen with you. So I'm going to do that quickly here. And I will put myself, how about up there? We'll see if I get in the way. <laughs> okay, so I opened up my um, slideshow. If you need to find your slideshow again, you can go into Google. You can go to the waffle right here and click on the waffle and go to slides and it should pop up your slideshow that you can open. And sometimes there's a funky thing that happens and it says you don't have permission to um, to edit this app. Do you want to request permission? And you can you can email me on there. And and for some reason it does that sometimes. But if it does, send um, just say request permission to edit, and I'll let you in. I don't know why it does that. But one of those technology things. Um, anyway, you should see yours, and you should be able to open it. So I wanted to talk to you. I have a a few different things. I made a list here. Oh, see, I'm in the way. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is about adding your source. And your source is where you get your information from, right? So if I am looking up ladybugs, and this is my insect research, um, I'm looking, looking, oh, I'm in the way again. <laughs> the traveling teacher. Okay. I'm looking, looking, I find a book on Epic here about ladybugs, and it says um, baby ladybugs are called larva. A ladybug larva is long and spiny. Its favorite food is aphids. Aphids are pests that kill plants. So baby ladybugs eat aphids, and aphids are pests that kill plants. So I could go here. Um, to where it says environmental help. How is the insect helpful to the environment, other insects, or humans? And I could write down, let's see, I could write down that um, ladybugs eat aphids, aphids eat plants. So ladybugs help and help help let's see help make plants help make sure more plants live, which is good for humans. Okay, so I now notice I didn't copy the exact words. So the words here were baby ladybugs are called larva. A ladybug larva is long and spiny. Its favorite food is aphids. Aphids are pests that kill plants. So I did not copy all those words and put them in my slideshow. I took the idea and I put the idea in my own words in here. Um, Remember, you can triple click or you can highlight. So if you triple click, then you can make your, you can click on the plus sign to make your um, font size bigger, to make your words bigger. Okay, so I, I put it into my own words. That's what I learned from the book. Um, if I go back to Epic and I look at the first page here, it's called Ladybug's World of Insects. And now that, Ladybug's World of Insects, Ladybug's World of, let me make sure I copied it exactly because that's the one you need to copy. Oh, Ladybug's World of Insects. Ladybug's, oh, I got that. Ladybug's World of Insects. You want your source to be the exact title or the exact name of the website that you got it from. Now up here, like sometimes websites go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, you just need the main name of the website. So for example, um, let me, so if you go, for example, if you found something, say I wrote something on 
on the Boston Harbor website on my teacher page. Let's go there. Come on, teacher page. Cole is doing a meeting right now and Lila is doing something on the computer, so we're a little slow. But let's say you had, let's say I had taught you some facts on our website, on our school class website, um, and they were here and you wanted to, to write down the source of the information. Instead of writing this whole thing, you could just write bostonharbor.osd.wednet.edu. You, you could just write the name of the website, or you could write Boston Harbor Elementary website, and that would be enough for your source. But this one I got from a book, so I write down the title of the book. I am not asking you to write down the um, author's name, but as you go through school and you go up into the upper grades, you're going to start to need to write down the author's name too, because that gives the author credit which we always wanna do. So this is one source on e for each of these slides, I want you to have two different sources of information. So I would need to go find some more information that I wanted to add, um, or another source that said the same thing about eating aphids, and then I could write down that source. So I want you to have two sources for each slide. Um, this one is the one I showed you in class. Remember this one? And it said that we were finding the pop-out facts like yellow spotted ladybug. That is a type of ladybug. It's interesting, but it's not the most important pop-out fact in this nonfiction text on these two pages. We talked about how the fact that they live on six of the seven con continents is pretty important. That's a big pop-out fact, right? It says where ladybugs live, and this um, this is a nonfiction text feature here, this map. It tells us that this is nonfiction, right? Um, this shows me all the different places that the ladybugs live. So I can find that slide. Oh, I, I'm always in the way here. Let's see. Environmental help, environmental harm, habitat, Okay, what is my insect's habitat? Where in the world does my insect live? Okay, um, I can write in here. Um, there are ladybugs everywhere in the world, except where are they not? Um, except in Antarctica, it looks like, except on, on every continent, except, let's see, I'm gonna write, there are ladybugs on every continent in the world, except Antarctica. There are ladybugs on every continent in the world, except Antarctica. So let me make sure that I didn't copy the words, they live on six of the seven continents and it shows not in Antarctica, just not in that one, okay? So I did a good job with that. Now I need to go back to find the name of this book, Ladybugs. And, and you know, I said you didn't have to put the, um, the author, but since that title is just so little, we could put the author if we wanted to. Bugs by Gail Gibbons. So I could put that, that down as a source. And then if I find some more information about my insect's habitat, I can um, add another source there. Okay. And remember, if I want to, I could triple click on that to highlight all of that and I can make it bigger like that so it stands out a little bit more. Okay. So let's go back to the things I wanted to talk to you about. I'm in the way again. <sighs> okay, adding your source, don't copy the words exactly, change them into your own wording, okay? Because we've talked about that many times, when you take somebody else's words, it's like taking their work and saying that it's yours. You have to change it and to make it yours. Um, ooh, adding a slide. Okay, so if you, 
have done all of these things and you're like, oh, I, I still have this really cool piece of information that I wanted to add. You can, and I really want to add a slide. You can click on wherever you want your slide to come next. So like, let's say after, after environmental harm, I want to add a new slide before I get to Habitat. So I could click on that one. I can go insert. And oops, nope, sorry not insert. I go to slide. My apologies. So I go to slide and then I go new slide and I click on that. Okay. And it'll give you a new one with the same kind of um, background template. Okay. So that's my new slide and then I could give it a new title and everything. And if I'm like, oh wait, I didn't mean for it to go there. I wanted it to go to the end. You can click on these slides and you can drag them to other places, okay? So you could click, I could click on the end and I could put it up there, but that wouldn't make any sense, right? So then I could click on that and drag it back down, okay? And we um, talked about how to add uh, images. And if you didn't watch that one, that was on, um, one of, on last Friday, I, I believe it was, if you can't find it check with me and I'll find it for you. But there was a lesson that showed you how to um, how to search and add uh, graphics. Yours might not be a ladybug like mine. So um, you don't want it to be too cutesy. We talked about that because this is a scientific slideshow that we're doing. Let's see. Mm, I don't want it to be too cartoony. I want it to look pretty well, that one looks good. Okay, so I can drag it over. Oh my gosh, it's huge. And then if I want to make it smaller, I can drag the box. Oops. Make it a little bit smaller here. I can, if I click on it, I can move it around to where I want it. Okay, hi. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties, so I'm going to try to push these two videos together and call it one video. Um, I wanted to show you how to add some snazzy things to your slide. So if you've added a graphic, you can go and click insert animation, click on that. And then whatever you have clicked on is what you're going to animate. So, I had already played around a little bit with this. So I'm going to click on it, add animation, and then I can have, um, like I could have this fly in from the left um, after previous, and I can press play. And that's what it'll do. It's so fun, you can, you can play around with it. Um, you can um, have it do different things. On each of the different graphics that you add, you could have it do different things. So it's pretty fun. And then you can also give um, the slide a transition. So instead of just going one, two, three, four, you can have the slides transition um, in a cool way, like they could um, dissolve. You could apply it to all slides. And then when you watch it, oops, oh, we were on the last one. So let's see, let's go to slide uh, seven. It doesn't have much in it. So did you see it was kind of fading a little bit? Um, you can have it fade really slowly, or you could have it um, flip slowly. Let's try that. Let's try from the seventh slide. So then it's slowly flipping slowly flipping and then my ladybug will zoom in it's kind of a cool 
thing, I think. But the problem is, if you end up with a slide like this, where there is so much going on, this is like very exaggerated, right? Because you would never do this and cover up all your words and stuff. But if you have too much going on visually, like graphics and pictures and words and ah, it's, it loses the message of your slideshow. So we won't learn anything about ladybugs from you if it looks crazy to the eyes. So you want to be really careful that you don't add like a bajillion different animations and you don't make the slides do wacky, crazy things every time because it will take away from the science and from the research and from the time that you put in to make it. So I just did this as a silly example to show you. I don't want you to do too, too much. And like all of these have different animations. Let's look. It's nutty. So let's see when it goes to the next slide. It's too much. It's just like, whew, oh, see, something else was coming. So you don't want too much going on, okay? Um, you can play around with, oops, if you just click on one of the slides here, let's click on that. So the slide, you can change the background if you want. You could change the background color if you'd like. Um, I'm fine with that. You can work on changing the color of the, of the, um, text if you'd like. So um, you can play around with that. Where's the color for the, oh, I could highlight that. Um, you're welcome to do that. But again, don't make it too crazy for your eyes because um, we want to be able to read what you wrote, what you found, um, and enjoy it. Okay. So those are the things I wanted to show you today. Let me make sure I covered everything. So adding sources, don't copy. Plagiarism, that's what that's called when you copy somebody else's work and we don't want to do that. So um, adding a slide animation and don't overwhelm the eyes. So work on your slideshow, work on finding, um, work on finding all the research you need to. If you need extra sources, you're having a hard time finding information, email me or do uh, in the Flipgrid, do the question. Remember the, the little, frowny, thoughtful faces that go like that. If you do one in that grid, then I will see it and I'll respond to you and I'll help you. Um, and we'll talk more about the due date and everything, but this is your time to really work and try to get something on all those slides and try to get two sources, okay? Have fun. <laughs>